to the channel and welcome back to Stratsdale. And the last time we were here, I was collecting the F12 TDF. But today, while it's Ferrari themed, is not about the TDF and it's not about the identical Miami Blue <laughs> GT3 over my shoulder here, which despite there being a Porsche dealership directly opposite, is actually for sale from Ferrari Stratsdale. So if you want an identical GT3 to mine, nip down here. Anyway, today we are driving the GTC4 Lusso. Now, if you're wondering why I'm driving this car again, I actually have only ever driven the Lusso T, the V8 version. I drove that at its launch in Italy last year, was blown away by it. But the thing that appeals to me the most is, of course, the V12. Appealing because it's basically a F12 engine with four seats that you can use every day with four wheel drive and a wonderful twin clutch gearbox. So uh, why this is kind of, um, I guess, an appropriate time to start exploring cars like this is that the um, ownership of the RS6 is coming up on three years now. Uh, it's gone over 30,000 miles and probably next year, I mean, I don't mind being interrupted when it's an F40. That's crazy. <laughs> I love this place. <laughs> So next year, I'm probably planning on swapping the RS6 for something. Now I'm aware there's a new RS6 coming soon, so I'll probably wait to see that. But the next car that is definitely on my radar is the V12 Lusso. Let's hop in and check it out. Ultimately, while it's going to be all about the drive, the main thing for me that appeals to me about this car the most is of course, this moment. <laughs> <laughs> that noise is attached to four seats. weird hearing a, such a familiar sound but it being uh, transmitted through something so smooth right you know like just, the last V12 I drove was the TDF which delivers that experience very differently <laughs> <laughs> by the way I've been very rude and not introduced Payton uh, if you watched my gumball content you might have seen Payton uh, that uh, joined myself and gumball for that incredible journey last week have you recovered from that yet <laughs> <laughs> all, Where do you start, all, man? All I can say is this one time in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! The reason Painton's also here is that you do uh, some social media work for the Stratstone Group, right? That's right, correct. Um, so I was like, rather than do this on my lonesome, Painton's in the house. We've just come off Gumball. We can reminisce about that, even though it was only last week. Last week, yeah. Um, <laughs> while we're on our sort of journey, though, we do want to provide an insight into this car. Um, appropriately, the first stop is the petrol station. Yes. Yeah. Of now, course. no doubt, this thing drinks with two straws. <laughs> right. So <laughs> it'll be interesting because it's almost empty. So we'll see how much it costs to fill it up and then see how it lasts throughout the day. We are of course going to be driving it relatively spiritedly so I guess it will give a, a relative real world indication. I guess, because I guess. You're not going to be driving, buying one of these and driving it steady the whole time. No. So, but again, that's, that's, I guess that's the beauty of this car is the fact that like you said, it's Yes, it's a four-seater, but it's strapped to a V12 at the it front. Is. That excites me greatly. What else is there that follows this platform? To me, the next thing is a Panamera Sport Turismo and then an RS6. That's the kind of the cars which are next in line, yeah. I would say. But something with a naturally aspirated V12 in it, a Ferrari naturally aspirated V12, that's special, man. And to be able to have this, I think later we need to explore the back seat option that yeah I, I genuinely maybe you could drive and yeah. show for me around <laughs> in this wonderful car <laughs> yes. to Chatsworth sir okay we're at the petrol station now on my cars the uh, ethos of them of course is, a, is much more lightweight and stripped out and so any of this sort of plush leather sculpture is turned into carbon and normally the uh, boot release catch and the petrol catch which they feel randomly stuck on. There's this like panel of carbon and then just two buttons here, which opens the fuel cap. Of course, this is a lovely plush daily driver and our fuel cap button is right there, which I'm hoping will... Hey, there it is. All right, so let's have a look. Mildly depressing. I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're in somewhat of an affluent area at a shell putting in V power. So the average price might be skewed a little bit, but to witness these figures 
disproportionately are upsetting. We've filled up with 81 litres of fuel and it's costing us 115 pounds. I think that's the most ridiculous I've seen in quite a while. And I've done some road trips recently and filled up some thirsty cars. I'm gonna say that's more of a reflection of this fuel station than it is this car. Cause actually 81 liters, we had two bars left on the tank. It's probably a 90 liter tank, something like that. So yeah, let's not fill up here again. conversation we had before this would be a perfect gumball car wouldn't it just <laughs> it really would actually it's funny when I always see people that do gumball for their first year you can tell because they're yeah. in the most hardcore <laughs> least practical super or hyper car yeah and then gradually year after year they're like <laughs> they might add some more seats yes <laughs> and then it gets a bit softer and the real veterans get chauffeured <laughs> 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 okay, not quite, but uh, there it has been known that people have had, you know, like uh, phantom support cars yeah. where if they just want to chill, they can jump in swap that. drives. <laughs> setting actually channels the majority of the power to the rear, rear wheels which is great because when you feel like driving it uh, it lends itself well to the uh, characteristics of a driver's car yeah. but when it detects any slip or if you're in the wet or snow or That's just a, a loose surface the trickery that is going on underneath here the front wheels have their own gearbox it's crazy yeah. man so while this car is absurdly expensive uh, you are actually paying for quite a lot of tech that you actually don't see. Uh, okay, granted it's not wet, but we've been flooring it flat in first, and there's not even a light on the dash, no. nothing. It doesn't squirm, it just plants it and it just, just goes. goes. I mean, to be able to apply all, let's face it, almost 700 horsepower. Yeah. In this, four seats, dog in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go, that is so cool. But even now, I mean, you know, the roads aren't the best. No. We're not having to shout. We're not to, to talk to each other. This it, is the it, it's opposite of the TDF. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> Yet the engine is a very similar engine. Yeah. Okay, the TDF has elements of the XX program in it, but yeah. the majority of the drama of that car is from the drivetrain and the fact that there's basically no sound deadening. It's a very ferocious engineering exercise of what is essentially the same block. Yes. It, it's, it's like a different it, car, like a totally different world. But then, like, like we were saying before, the, the, the car is, is, is almost two cars in one. 
It really is. Because it's a Jekyll and Hyde car. It is. We like yes. it. Yes. <laughs> because earlier on, there was a moment where we just kind of shut up, didn't we? Yeah. yeah it was just, we were just chilling. Road noise, minimal. Seats, yeah. super comfy. And then you like flick it in to sport mode, drop it down a few cogs, and the valves hell. open up, and all hell breaks all loose. All hell breaks loose. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so cool. It's just crazy. I love this thing. Cheap. The roof. As ridiculously expensive as it is, it's a feature in any car that I've seen that transforms the feeling of it Massive. more than it. The amount Massive. of light that it lets through and cascades in this interior. Think about if this was all black now. It would feel a lot more a closed bit, in. Yeah, yeah. But with this, like you feel like I could reach up and touch the sky. It's amazing. It's good. Right, then let's go and hunt down some cake. I'm starving. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> So I remember when I first started this channel, I would come out here because these roads are fantastic. So we're talking two and a half years ago, and I think the scaffolding hasn't long come down and they were basically doing a renovation on the fascia of it. Yeah, and it turns out that they were applying real gold leaf to the window surrounds. So when you drive down here and it looks like a golden shimmer, it's because it literally is a golden shimmer. Look at it, it's crazy. What an incredible, building. Trying to find a parking space here. It will be interesting. What is quite cool though is uh, normally when I'm parking a Ferrari I'm normally like super cautious as to where I'm parking it. Now don't get me wrong obviously we don't want the car damaged but there's something about this that just lends itself to more real world scenarios like this this space right here. All right behold a practical Ferrari. Do you know what I say that this thing really comes into its own when you drop the seats. The reason I'm saying that is I'm absolutely shocked by the practicality of the 812. I say practicality. The boot space in the 812, the boot space in the F12 is ridiculous. This shelf here is actually the fuel tank. So it's a bit of an odd shelf, which is half the way through the car, which I guess could hinder a degree of space, but you can drop these seats here and then it opens up to uh, yeah, a pretty large space. So this section comes out and also this section comes out and then you've got just this much larger cave of space. Speaking of this section, uh, on all new Ferraris, the options that you spec on the car are then uh, laser etched onto a plaque, uh, which is often found in the boot. This is the spec list on our car for today. What this is basically saying is lots of options. <laughs> One thing I did pick up on earlier though, um, is right here, I was confused when the rear wiper <laughs> is indicated here as an optional extra. Now I did one, I was like, I know Ferrari take the mickey sometimes and they basically charge you for everything, but for the luxury of wiping your rear screen, I thought there's no way. Anyway, we went back in to Stratstone to clarify. Uh, turns out that it's a no cost optional extra. So if you live in an environment where, I don't know, the back of your car isn't getting dirty that often or it's not raining, you can uh, opt to have no rear wiper. I guess if you really want an aesthetically cleaner rear boot lid, then I guess it might look better without it. I don't know, but like I said, this is the kind of thing you're gonna be driving every day and it, it will get dirty. So if I was you, I would opt for the white. amazing for mounting GoPros too. <laughs> but this is an 11 and a half thousand pound optional extra. Great for GoPros, but it's an 11 and a half grand GoPro mount. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, obvious roll reversal. Where to, chauffeur? I reckon back to the Ferrari dealership back to the Ferrari. Yes. Right, let's go. Uh, so we've been very kindly lent this car for the entire day. Uh, but the dealership closes at six, which means we've got half an hour, G. It's great about sitting in the back. You can hear the exhaust even more. It's... Uh... <laughs> Dude, it's a 
amazing. Oof. What's the room like back there? Actually, really good. So I spent some time in the back of an FF, and um, they've definitely provided more room in this car. Now, at first, it might be a tad deceptive because it doesn't look like there's that much space between the seats and where your legs fit down here in the footwell. However, we were discussing earlier that because these seats are so dished, they're like their own bucket seats almost in the back of this car. You actually sit quite far back in the car, leaving you loads of leg room. When you see it from the front and you look back, you don't expect it. But you sit all the way back and this panoramic sunroof, honestly, dude, as good as it felt in the front, <laughs> it feels better. In the back, it's a whole new world. It's crazy. It's amazing. It's, and it's actually gorgeous. And for, for sort of the record of the video, yeah. we have moved that chair back to sort of simulate someone actually sat in that seat. That's right. So yeah. you, that is where that chair would be if someone would be sat in yeah. that chair right now. So, I mean, technically, if you wanted to kind of show for someone, you would push this all the way forward. Honestly, you would have so much space. But that's got a, your, I would say your average size in there. That's, yeah. that's the, the same distance back from the console as you are driving now. Yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. I could go a long way in this, man. <laughs> it's cool. Particularly with the sound of a V12 ringing in my ears. And you're even closer to the exhaust net even at the back. Closer. I'm enjoying this. So, in the front of this car, where the passenger sits, on the dashboard is the optional passenger display screen. Uh, we've kind of concluded that, yes, it's a gimmick, but <laughs> it's a very, very cool one. And I think without exception, this makes the passenger side experience the most interactive in any car Definitely. that I can think of. And I guess why Ferrari have done that is because, the, the yes, it is a driver's car, and yes, it's a driver, but it's a four-seater, so they know they're gonna have exactly. people in it. So I guess it's, it's keeping everyone, it, everyone entertained. Yeah. Well, normally, if you think about it, every other Ferrari is pretty much centered around the driver. Yeah. Almost without exception. Exactly. They did, developed this a little bit in the F12 when they introduced the passenger side display, but the first generation of that, like what is in the TDF, is yeah. very basic. Um, but on this, it's like a full color screen, and not only does it display, but the passenger can interact with it as well. So you can be DJ if you want to. <laughs> you could really annoy the driver by changing tracks and things like that. So the funny thing about it is, we were saying that it is literally six inches away from the primary screen. So, which so, is a big screen. Which is a big is. screen <laughs> that the passenger can interact with just as easily, uh, which is why we're saying that this passenger side display screen is totally unnecessary, but in terms of also um, a sense of occasion for the passenger, it's unlike any other car. Said, uh, did we tell you it? this is a family car? By the way, yeah. <laughs> if we haven't said that 12 times, it's a family car. Normally, I would complain uh, filming a supercar in the rain, but arguably, uh, this is perfect. Like, this is exactly the kind of Condition. We've had the full spectrum. Yeah. Right? yeah. We've had a beautiful dry day and now we're wet and we're on some tight British B roads which are conventionally bumpy, potholy, and slippery. And uh, to be able to knock this down into wet mode and see how it deals with things is great. Uh, we just ha had a quick squirt back there. Um, once again, not even a light, not no. even a traction control light. Just grip and go. It's awesome. Modes on the Manatino we've got ice and snow, we've got wet. Comfort, which is the equivalent of just daily use, yeah. and then sport. Uh, but equally, we can independently control the damper settings from the drivetrain and traction control settings. Yeah. So even when you're in sport on the Manatino, you literally press the damper button, which puts it into bumpy road mode, which should also be called British B road mode. Yes. Um, <laughs> and you can enjoy faster gear shifts and lovely throttle response, but you can just iron out the creases of uh, unwanted bumps, which is cool. Uh, but as soon as you turn this down uh, to either comfort or wet or ice and snow, there actually isn't the option to decouple the dampers and have those to your own settings. They've sort of created their own settings. Yes. So the idea is if you're in comfort, it's chill mode anyway. 
Jeez. Jeez. Please look at this. <laughs> and we're back. Amazing day. Massive thank you to Stratstone, as always, for lending me this wonderful car. Uh, thoughts? Desperately want one. <laughs> Obviously, this car, this actual car, is about to become available for sale. It's their demo right now, uh, but soon it'll be available to buy. So I'm going to keep my eye on the market, but the drive today has utterly and thoroughly confirmed that this is uh, one of the most desirable four-seater cars I can think of, mostly thanks to that wonderful naturally aspirated V12. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to spend some more time with one of these soon. What I'd love to do is a proper road trip in one to see what they're all about when you use one for much longer. I think that's the best way of really uncovering the characteristics of a car. But until then, the want is strong. As always guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.